Okay, hello everyone. I'm just a little long-winded on this one, but this is chapter five, principles of management. This is lecture part three. I promise I'll get it done in this one. Uh, so we're on developing strategy through external analysis. Uh, an external analysis tells the strategist uh, what is outside the organization. So you begin with the general environment. So you want to find out what other companies are doing, uh, what consumers are looking for, things of that nature, if you want to uh, <clears throat> make certain business decisions. So here's the pestle analysis of environmental factors. Uh, you have political, economic, social, technical, environmental, and legal, and all of these things are, are definitely interconnected. An organization's microenvironment. So in the industry, uh, a group of firms producing products uh, that are close substitutes, you have upstream markets, uh, industries that provide the raw materials or inputs uh, for the focal industry, right? So these raw materials, if I have, uh, if I make skateboards, then one of the raw materials would be wood. Downstream markets are industries, sometimes consumer segments, that consume uh, the industry outputs, right? So uh, these are the people who consume, as they call them, consumers, uh, the outputs of that raw materials. Uh, industry and micro uh, environment uh, consist of stakeholder groups that a firm has regular dealings with, right? So certain groups that they, they continue to deal with. And the way these relationships develop uh, can affect the cost, quality, and overall success of a business. So here are Porter's five forces that go into uh, the rivalry. So you have new entrants coming into the rivalry, right? So if I was the first individual to make a laptop, I would have made a lot of money before anybody else made the laptop, but, but now we have new entrants that come in, and so that, that cuts a, a bigger slice of my pie, which I don't like. Uh, you have buyers, <clears throat> people who buy your, your product. You have substitutes, uh, things that you can buy instead of buying that. So if you go to, to the doctor and you go to the pharmacy, you always have a, a generic brand, right? So you know, you know, a lot of times people say, hey, you know what, this, this costs too much. I'm going to go ahead and go with the generic. It does the exact same thing. And you have your suppliers that supply the raw materials uh, for you to handle your different uh, types of business. So let's go ahead and read up on Porter's Five Forces. Uh, so understanding dynamics uh, <clears throat> that shape how much profit potential exists within an industry is key to knowing how likely a particular firm is to succeed within the industry. Uh, <clears throat> there are five key forces that determine profitability in a particular industry. Uh, so you have potential entrants, uh, they're firms, uh, firms that, uh, that are not currently considered viable competitors in the industry, but they may become viable competition in the future, right? So you have some of these individuals, later on they may be, uh, they may be competition for you, maybe they're not competition right now, but you still got to keep an eye out for them. You have suppliers over here uh, to the auto industry include firms such as Lear Corporation who produces auto interior, interior systems, right? They don't make everything from scratch uh, at the auto yard. They, they, you know, they outsource and bring certain things in. Uh, industry competitors in the auto industry include firms such as uh, Ford, Chrysler, and GM, all the different competing firms. Buyers are those firms that buy directly from the industry such as automobile dealerships, right? I'm from so-and-so. Uh, a Ford and I want to buy all of these Fords so I can sell them obviously for a little bit more than I purchased them for. And then you have substitutes for the auto industry. Uh, products include uh, bicycles and mass transit. Right? Uh, so you, you have uh, what's the substitute for, for a car for driving. Maybe I'm going to take a plane, maybe I'm going to take a helicopter, maybe I'm going to take uh, the bus, maybe I'm going to jump in my, uh, my um, uh, jet pack right? and just uh, fly to work. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? So Porter's attractiveness and profitability analysis. So the likely profit. So these, this is a very key slide that you should look at. Uh, likely profit. Is the industry difficult to enter? Is there limited rivalry? Are the buyers relatively weak? Are the suppliers relatively weak? And are there few substitutes? These will lead to higher profit. These will challenge your profit model. Is the industry easy to enter? Well, if anybody can enter it, then everybody will enter it and you will have a lot of competition. Is there a high degree of rivalry between firms within the industry? Right. So if there's a high degree of rivalry, firms are probably going to drop prices in order to get you over there, which then if company ABC leaves and your company XYZ, then you know what about your profit margin now that you've <clears throat> reduced the price on everything? Uh, are buyers strong? Are suppliers strong, right? So you want to make sure that you have the adequate amount of suppliers and uh, make sure that they can give you the things that you need. And is it easy to switch to alternative? If it's easy to switch to alternative, 
a lot of times you know it's not the best market to go into uh, what are the six dimensions of the environment that are a broad concern when you can uh, conduct a pestle analysis, right? So these are some of your discussion questions. Be sure to review those, get good answers, learn a lot from them. <clears throat> now you have the strategy diamond. So in the strategy diamond, let's see our let's look at our different areas. So we have our arenas. Where will we be active and with how much emphasis? What product categories, which channels, or market segments? Uh, what geographic areas, which core technologies, which value creation stages. So you have to think about it. You, you may not want to put your store in every single neighborhood. Uh, what if it's a, a high crime rate? You probably don't want to put your store there. Uh, vehicles. How will we get there? Just like a car, if you want to get somewhere, you have to say, oh, well, how are we going to get there? Are we going to walk? Are we going to take a car? Are we going to take a bus? Uh, you have internal development, joint ventures, licensing, franchising, alliances, and acquisitions. Right? All different modes of getting there. Uh, we have staging. What will our, sh our, our speed and sequence of moves uh, be? Speed of expansion and sequence of initiatives. We have our different uh, <coughs> differentiations. Uh, how will we win? Our image, customization, price, styling, uh, product uh, reliability, and speed to market. All right. So how are we going to when is it our image that we have the best image and you want to buy it because uh, you know we've got this great brand image or is it customization because we're gonna make it exactly how you want it to be is it price because we just have the cheapest price is it styling is a product reliability uh, that it just keeps going 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 and uh, is it the speed to market how quickly we get the product out there and then last but not least we have our economic logic uh, so how will uh, returns be obtained? Lowest cost through set, uh, scale advantages, right? So if you have a competitive advantage, that's what you should focus on uh, on doing and doing it well. Uh, lowest cost uh, through scope and replication advantages. Uh, premium price due to unmatchable services. So I, if I have an unmatchable service and nobody else can do it, then I am going to charge you a very high price. And premium prices due to proprietary product features. No one else can do it just like how I do it. So I, yes, I am definitely going to charge you more for that. Now, here, you have a personal growth and development. And so you have your personal mission and vision, right? So as opposed to looking at it in a company view, you're looking at it a me view. And you have a personal strategy for growth and development. And then your personal goals and objectives right here. And I actually do want you to write down uh, at least five personal uh, goals and objectives. It really helps you to... Uh, to write these things down in order to understand, hey, this is what I'm what I'm looking to do, and uh, this is how I'm going to get there. So this is a really good exercise. So personal growth and development strategy, and this is a great slide. Uh, you want to uh, find out what type of work do I want to do, right? So think about what type of work you want to do. Uh, a lot of times, you know, when you're a kid, you say, this is what I want to do. And then sometimes those dreams just go by the wayside. And all of a sudden you end up in a cubicle doing something and wondering how you got there. Uh, what leisure activities do I like? And are there jobs associated with those leisure activities? Uh, where do I want to live? Right. Do I want to live in sunny uh, Southern California? Or do I want to move to Alaska? What capabilities uh, do I need to participate in these arenas? Right. How can I set myself apart from everybody else? What organizations value their capabilities and what capabilities do I want to have and excel in, right? So what am I looking for in terms of, uh, of training, learning, and development? And the personal vehicles, like I said, uh, we jump in a car because we get in a vehicle uh, to go somewhere. So we have to have our personal vehicles if we want to go somewhere in the workplace. So what do I need to accomplish on my own? What do I need to accomplish on my own? Uh, what do I need to accomplish on my own? What do I need to accomplish on my own? I guess they put that there twice, right? Uh, what do I need to accomplish with the help of others? And who are they, right? So what I need to do on my own, what do I need to do with others, and who are those others that I need to actually work with and deal with? <clears throat> and continue with the personal growth and development strategy, personal areas and differentiators. Um, what sequence of events does my strategy require? Uh, what are the financial requirements and consequences of each event? What is my deadline uh, for the first event? Is the deadline flexible? Right? Do I have some wiggle room? Uh, can I manage the pacing of achievement for any event or for each event? <clears throat> and how will timing affect achievement of my personal growth and development strategy? Uh, do some events provide an opportunity to reconsider or adjust my strategy? I will tell you I adjust my strategy on a daily basis. Uh, it's a continual process of readjusting over and over again. 
Uh, personal vehicles. How do how do how does achievement of my strategy help me pay my bills? Well, maybe if I achieve my strategy, I'm going to get a raise. Uh, what dimensions of my strategy, like arenas or differentiators, is the economic logic of my strategy most dependent on? And how sustainable is the economic logic of my strategy? <clears throat> so, how long are these individuals going to uh, be excited about my company and what they do? <clears throat> And last but not least, more discussion questions for you. I know you guys love those so much. Uh, what are the five facts of the Hambrick and Fredrickson uh, strategy diamond? Uh, so just, uh, I, I would say always pull up the, the discussion slide, uh, look through your book and peruse to, uh, to attempt to find the answer, and then discuss those, uh, those questions. Uh, by, by the end of the semester, uh, you will uh, know them definitely by the back, like the back of your hand. Right, so always just don't skip over those discussion questions. Want you to read them, want you to learn from them, and gain better insight and perspective in regards to uh, everything that you do as an individual, and also everything that you do with your company. As always, I have a good day and a great week. This is the end of uh, Chapter Five: Principles of Management Lecture Part Three.